CMMG rifles. You guys know them for models like the Mutant, then the Anvil, and now the Guard. The CMMG MKG 45 Guard. And that's what's coming up next on the VSO Gun Channel. So 2017 is the year of the pistol caliber carbine, and we've seen quite a few uh, different designs come out this year. This is another one. Uh, typically, when you see a, a pistol caliber carbine, we're talking about a 9mm carbine, and the reason that's done is uh, it's easy because it's direct blowback, uh, and there's a little bit of laziness there. You know, They're easier to do than some other things. One of the things I really like about CMMG is they push the envelope. They sure do. And they, and they do it right. This is in 45 ACP, and typically you don't see 45 ACP uh, carbines. Now, there are a few out there, but typically they suck. And the reason they suck is because a direct blowback system on a 45 ACP can be a little bit much for the standard operating components of the AR-15. Specifically, uh, there's a lot of back pressure even though it doesn't translate downrange to a lot of velocity, there's more back pressure, and typically the guns eat themselves. They chew themselves up. So how CMMG has fixed this is this little guy right here. This is their bolt carrier group, and this is what they call their radial delayed blowback system. There are cuts back here on the back side of the bolt, and what that allows this thing to do is slow leak around the bolt just like a typical delayed blowback system, only usually there's flutes in the barrel that allow that to happen. This is actually in the bolt and it slows that impulse and allows a very uniform, very soft uh, operation of the bolt, thus extending the longevity of the gun and it also keeps them from having to overbuild the gun so that it's massively heavy. This gun is very light. We'll put a scale on it here in a moment. Uh, but it's uh, it's a really really soft shooter in 45 ACP. What'd you say? Take it. They really you know got innovative when they were designing this gun. One of the things we want to point out right away is the dedicated magwell. Um, that has very generous bevels on it. Um, it's really easy to insert the magazine into it. It just takes a standard Glock 21 magazine um, to slide in really easy. And that being said, um, you need to check out this mag release. It's really extended, really accessible, but check this out. Just pops them right out every time. You know? Positive ejection, that's always something we're, we're definitely looking at. Yeah. Now the one thing I would note is unfortunately uh, we had to put an EOTech on this thing uh, because it does not come with iron sights, which uh, we'd like to see some flip up iron sights on there. I know that that's a user preference thing as well, so we won't ding uh, CMMG up 
for that too much, uh, and there's no plate on the back to put uh, a clip in a sling, which, you know, they do have Magpul furniture all over the gun that does have the QD spaces. Uh, so that's, you know, another user preference thing as well. One thing that uh, is really neat about the guard that is different from a lot of PCCs is last round bolt hold open. So that is a little bit of a departure and they've done it a little bit differently in there. We'll get a shot of that so you guys can see it. Anyway, that's enough of the yakking. Doc, what do you say that we go do some more shooting? Me first. All right, guys, we wanted to see if we had any, you know, selectivity issues with ammo when it comes to this gun. So what we've done is we've selected four different um, style of ammos. It's just your basic 230 grain FMJ ball ammo, standard velocity, but they're all pretty much equal. We're going to see uh, how it goes. We're going to start off with some Winchester. Moving right along to the Agula. Well, you can tell the Agula is definitely better made ammo. Like the 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 ejection pattern was really consistent on the Agula. It was really all over the place with the Winchester. All going about the same place. Yeah. 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 The Agula like all landed in a pile right here. But well, let's see what the uh, Remington uh, UMC feels like. I mean, there were only like three that went weird, but for the most part, uh, you know, they were pretty consistent too on the Remington. Yeah, they're all running pretty good. I, I, you know, I'm not having any issues at all here. Now, we're going to wind it up with some uh, PPU. Yeah, this should be our probably our lowest quality stuff. Uh, so we'll see. Okay, here we go. which is strange, but we had three that went to the rear, right, at like five, six o'clock, yeah. and then all the rest of them landed in the projected ejection pattern right here. So actually the PPU, as far as ejection pattern is concerned, um, was most consistent, which doesn't make any sense. Well, the most important thing that it ate everything we threw at it. That's true. So, uh, end of test. All right, guys, out of the rounds we just fired, um, we thought the Agula was probably the hottest um, of the four. So we're going to go ahead and, and use it as our test on the uh, chronograph. Um, normally, 45 ACP subsonic, but we're not sure when you put it through a rifle and a 16-inch barrel. So we're going to check that out now. Yeah, I don't know what that hit over there, but did you hear that one fly? A rock. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> good. So yeah, still subsonic. Awesome. Out of uh, out of that 16-inch barrel, which is great. Very good. Yes. So we know what we got to look forward to when we throw a can on the end of it. Yes. All 
right guys, so all that ammunition that we just ran from all those different manufacturers uh, ran pretty great through the guard and we didn't have any issues with it. Uh, however, if you do find a ammunition out there that is not running well on your guard, what CMMG has available is the action tuning set for their bolt carrier group. So you take, this is not included in with the gun, but it is available separately. You take your bolt carrier group, and there are three different weights here. We have a one ounce weight, a two ounce weight, and a 3.5 ounce weight. So that is for, for instance, if you're shooting plus P ammunition, your hot loads, or if you're gonna run the gun suppressed, you know, you, you may have some issues with, uh, with, with uh, over uh, pressuring of the gun. This mitigates that just like swapping out to a heavier buffer. Uh, we're gonna see how this gun runs suppressed is we're actually going to, with the silencer, go ahead and test that bolt weight kit that we talked about earlier coming up right now. Uh, what was your favorite? The two ounce. The two ounce? Yeah, yeah. Um, the the one that's what's the one that's heavier than that? Uh, three point five. There's a there's a one ounce, two ounce, and a three point five. Yeah. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, the one ounce was fine. The two ounce was 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 my favorite. The th the three point five ounce. It seemed it seemed like it was slapping. Oh uh, yeah. It was just too heavy. I I don't know. Hmm. The the two ounce seemed to be about just right. So maybe. Maybe the three ounce, three point five ounce would be more applicable to like plus P loads instead yeah, of suppressed yeah, shooting. Yeah, a little hotter rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but with this hush ammo, I mean, I, I'd say the two ounce seemed to work really well. 